Hey, this is Russ Danner from Crafter CMS, and I'm back to tell you about a new use case for Crafter CMS and a new blueprint that you can download and use yourself for free from our marketplace, and that is digital signage. Now, for this one, we've partnered up with the American Sport Bike Racing Association, a premier racing league for motorcycle racing this side of the Mississippi. They race all up and down the East Coast and into the Midwest and have some of the biggest grids in club racing. Now, what am I talking about? Well, a little bit of this. And this. It's pretty exciting stuff. Now, these kinds of events take place at motorsports parks, usually two miles of closed circuit, large facilities, can fit a lot of riders, a lot of spectators. And so, as you can imagine, there's a huge need for communication. The PA broadcasting system is always going. There's signs everywhere, traffic flow in terms of people, facilities, information. And as exciting as this sport is, there's also an element of danger. And so, of course, there's sign-in for the riders, there's technical inspection, there's equipment inspection and so on. So there's a lot of process that goes on as well. So again, communication is a huge piece of this. And what we've been doing with Azra is replacing some of these physical signs with digital experiences, all driven by Crafter CMS. Signs that deal with the process, helping riders know how to get through the morning inspection and sign-in process, and putting up information around the motorsports park. And why are we doing this? Well, physical signs, as good as they are, they tend to be on these signboards. They can only say what they can say. They're pretty low to the ground. People are pretty used to ignoring them. They're not very modern. So, Azure wants to step things up, be able to communicate a lot better. We want to be able to use modern graphics, the combination of text and video, and they want to be able to change those signs throughout the day with special information like when is the riders meeting and is there a schedule change, is there a grid change, and so on. So we want something that's dynamic so that we can repurpose that sign and retask it at any given moment. And this, again, is where Crafter CMS comes in and makes us powerful. So now that you know what it is, let's talk about how it works. The first thing you need to understand is that this is all powered by very cost-effective, commercially available off-the-shelf components. Any high-definition TV or monitor will do, and you can drive it with any kind of PC or PC-like device. For many of these, we've been using these small Linux sticks. Our digital signage blueprint is based on React and takes advantage of web tech. So all you need to drive these signs is, frankly, a web browser or a web tile in an app. And all of this is HTML5 or a web canvas powered by that React application and driven by headless services from Crafter CMS. So to put all of this together, each of these signs is this React application running in a browser at each of these signs and calling back to a headless API driven by content in Crafter CMS. So, from a networking perspective, all we need access to is Crafter CMS. This could be across the internet, or it could be on a local network in a closed environment. So the networking topology here is very simple and easy to set up, easy to secure, and so on. Now, when we get into the authoring environment, you're going to notice that we have a hierarchical set of display configurations. So, what that will tell you is that any one of these signs can be tasked with one of those display configurations and that is what's going to drive what's on that particular sign. Multiple signs can be pointed at a specific configuration. So now that you have a better understanding of how the system is deployed, let's talk about how we can manage what's on each of these screens. And for this, we're going to jump into Crafter Studio and I'm going to show you how to edit and manage these screens. Okay, let's start by logging into Crafter Studio, and here we can see all of our projects. We're going to scroll down to digital signage, and this takes us to our first default sign or default display configuration. In fact, if I open up the left-hand bar here of display configurations, we can see that hierarchy that I was talking about and the various uh, screens, including this one here, no re-entry, which is 
a simple text slide in both English and Spanish. Now going back to the default slide here, we can see this is a pretty sophisticated one. It's got multiple slides, some are text, some are video, some are pictures, and there's a bunch of features on display here like a progress bar, a time indicator, and a watermark. Now let's say that we want to edit some of this content here as we sort of watch through these slides here. We might find something we want to edit, like for example, all transponder and registration issues. Let's just change that to transponder and registration issues. So we go up to the right hand corner, click edit, and then that'll give us in-context editing and we simply edit our content right here on the screen in our styles, click out, and that's it, our change is made. So editing content couldn't be more simple, it's pretty much point and click. What about adding content? Well here we can see that many of the slides precede a video that supports it and in this case with the loop we don't have one. So let's click edit and this will give us a form view where we can see all of the slides for this particular configuration. Well let's click add and then choose our library and here let's pick loop and loop hit two different videos and then click add and that adds those video slides to the end of our list here and we want to move them into position where we want them so let's add this one here and then let's add the other one after the slide after that so now let's click save and this will re-render the digital sign and we're still in edit mode so it's still quite flat and we can see the first video which was there originally then we see our loop messaging and then the new video that supports it let's go ahead and play that okay that looks good it really supports the messaging in the previous slide then we see a message about the transponder and what it wants and then we show an example of a proper hit now what if we want to edit content that applies to all display configurations? Well, for that we have content inheritance. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this inheritance rules object. And here we can see a few properties that are inherited by every display configuration, including a marquee. Well, let's use this to announce a riders meeting at 815. I'm going to put this in the top marquee and I'm also going to put it in the bottom marquee. All right, now scrolling down, I also see a watermark that gets applied. I'm going to turn that off for a second. And here, once we hit save, we can see the effect of those changes. So we have marquee at the top and the bottom, and we have no watermark in the bottom right-hand corner. And we can see if we go to other display configurations, we see that they also show that marquee. Now let's override the particular message at this one. Let's make sure that this is known as a secure area. And here we can see the marquee is now denoting the secure area at the top and the bottom for this display configuration only, which we can see when we go back to this default display configuration. Okay, now let's go back to the inheritance rules and let's turn our watermark back on and click save. And we see that watermark on the main display configuration and then if we go to our no re-entry display configuration we also see the watermark so now we see an example of an override and a common property in play at the same time well I hope this has been helpful for you I hope you're excited about this solution please check it out in our marketplace at craftercms.com